I'm Teresa welcome to my channel thank you for joining me here today today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely little storage box I've decorated it with one of the gel prints that I made the other week and I've created this to store this um, set of 31 images really little Polaroids um, that I created for a challenge earlier in the year they've been sitting around on my desk getting in the way getting dusty and I thought I need to put them away somewhere I and mean, I thought today was a good opportunity to make a little storage box for them um, so I'll move this out of the way and I'll be back to show you how I did it I have drawn myself a template on some graph paper for the little box that I'm making today and I'm going to make this box out of a piece of cardstock this is um I like the colour grey on this. It just so happens that this has got a cream on, on the other side, which will be ideal. So when I draw my lines, I'm going to draw them on this so you can see what I'm doing. The cream is going to be on the inside and, and the grey, I think, on the outside. And I'm going to decorate the panels, the front and the back panels, definitely, with some of these prints that I created um, the other week using some stencils and metallic paint. The box that I'm making is to store these little uh, Polaroid images that I created for a challenge at the beginning of the year. Um, it was a challenge to do one a day for the month of January, I believe. So I have 31 of these little Polaroid cards that I created and they've been sitting on a shelf ever since and I keep thinking I must find somewhere to put them, to store them. I've had a look for little albums to keep Polaroid um, photographs in. And I haven't found anything that I particularly wanted. So I thought, you know what, today I was unsure what to, to do for a video today. And I thought, I'm just going to make a little box. It's been a while since I've created a box, a storage folder, that type of thing. And I thought that will just, it'll kill two, two birds with one stone. I'll get to put these away um, and, and I'll get to share with you my process again with how I create these little storage boxes and folders and things that I've done in the past. Now I will give you the measurements. Um, I'll pop a link in the description below to a, I'll draw out slightly better this little template that I have here with my measurements on and I'll upload it to my blog and bear in mind I may be changing over my blog um, at the end of this month. The hosting, the domain name, the security certificate, it all comes up for renewal and I don't use it that often now and I'm considering migrating over to either just a free hosted blog um, or a Flickr page or something where you can still just go and download any templates that I want but without all the expense that I'm having now running a blog that once every few months I might just upload one picture on there. It's it's not really worth my while keeping but there'll be a link below. If I change it, I'll change the, I'll change the link Um but I will give you the measurements as I go along today anyway. The way that I created my template, quite simply, and I, and I thought I'll do it on graph paper because it makes it a bit easier to see, is this is what I want to put in the box. So I put this down on the graph paper and allowing a millimetre or two either side, that's going to be the size that the front and the back of my box needs to be. So I drew out a rectangle. Now that's how thick I need my box to be, how deep I need it to be. So I pop that underneath that rectangle and again giving an extra millimetre just so that it's, we don't want it to be too snug a fit. I drew another line and that became the base. I know how big I want the front and the back so I replicated that rectangle under here. I also replicated the base to be the top here and then added a bit at the top here to be a flap because I want this box to have a little flap that tucks in. Now obviously the side strips they need to be the same de depth as the bottom and the top so I could work out how I needed those to be. And then I just trimmed this little bit away so that it, in the base it, it's not going to be too bulky. You know, there'll be little tabs here that we can we can glue it together. But that is the basis of how I come up with a template for something. For example, if, if I wanted to store ATCs, which are obviously a different size, I would have popped that on again, give myself a millimetre or two, but draw round that. That would be the size that my base 
my back would be and the front would be and depending on how many I wanted to put it put in the box you work out how deep you want the box to be it's quite simple to do it on a graph paper or, or a squared paper and then I can just count up what my measurements are and pass those on to you but obviously this box is for me to store these 31 little Polaroid drawings that I've done these are digi stamps from Vera Lane studio if anyone is interested um, and I just I've just printed them out and coloured them. They're they're all pretty much coloured with Copic markers, I believe. So um, anyway, I say I will leave a link to my measurements used. It's a nice little box, but it is easily adaptable. So what I need to do now that I've got my template is transfer this onto this piece of card. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I've got a pencil. I've got a ruler. I can draw on where they're going to, where everything's going to go, and then I can use a scoreboard to score where my fold lines are going to be. Now that I've transferred my markings onto my piece of cardstock, it's time to score the lines. Now this whole piece here measures 30 centimeters by 12.8 centimeters. That's the total height and width of it, and I've got to score down these lines here and these are 1.2 centimeters in from each side now obviously I don't have a scoreboard that is in apps in millimeters but what I can do is just line up where my pencil line is along one of the grooves on my scoreboard and just and make sure I can do it nice and straight and score my line And I can move it slightly so this line on the other side is lined up with one of the grooves on the scoreboard. And I can score down that one. Now I need to score four lines across this um, template. Now the first one is four centimetres down. Then the next one is 2.2 centimetres further down, which is level with the top of these little tabs. Then I move down 10.3 centimetres to do the next one. Another 2.2 centimetres for that final one. But again, just going to line this up with one of the lines on my scoreboard and score it so I get a nice clean crease. You could skip this step and just fold it on the line but just scoring it just makes it just look that little bit neater when you actually come to fold it especially if your cardstock's quite a heavy weight. So you might be able to see better on there. I've got a nice crease on there marked so that I can now fold all these panels ready to assemble. And when it's all folded up That will be the, the basic shape of my little box. So I can move the scoreboard away now. And what I want to do before I actually assemble it, just because it's going to be easier to do it while it's flat, is put some of these gel prints onto the panels. I want to decorate the front and the back. I want to use this one um, as much as possible. And if I can also get a little bit to do the side panels and the base, I will. But as long as I've got the front and the back done, um, I'll be happy. Now, obviously working out the front and back main panels are, if I just pop this back this way up, 8.4 centimetres wide by 10.3 centimetres long. Now I want to cut these decorative pieces a little bit smaller. So I'll knock a few millimetres off. So I'll, I'll make it um, eight centimetres 
by 9.9 .9 centimeters approximately and that'll leave me with a little bit of a border around the edge of my print and I'm going to cut two pieces that size to decorate the front and the back. I've managed to get a piece for the front and a piece for the back and a piece for the top and the bottom. I don't have enough out of that one print to decorate the side as well, but that's fine. I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. I'm, I'm happy that I can cover the, the top and, and the bottom as well as the sides. So I'm going to glue those in place just using um, a PVA type glue. This is Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue. I, I like this because I can pop this in a bottle with a fine nib and it just makes it easy and quickly to apply. Once your panels are dry it's time to assemble the box. So I'm going to put some glue on one of my side tabs and a little bit on the corresponding bottom tab. Tuck that little bottom tab in and then stick the side panels together. And then repeat on the other side. And then that's our completed little box and the top flap will fold in like so. Now you can take a little semicircle out there if you want, um, just to make it easier to take the flap in and out. Or you could indeed decorate the flap and attach it on the front with a little magnet or something. Um, there's another option for you there. So I'm going to pop my little Polaroid pictures in there, close my box up like so and I'm really happy with that. Happy that I've used a, uh, another one of my nice gel prints, one of my favourite ones here. Happy that I found a storage for my Polaroids. I'm tempted to make a little label to pop on the side here just to say what's in inside them. Um, maybe write the, the date on that I did the challenge as well. So I did. I went and got a little alphabet stamp set and stamped Polaroid Pops on one side because that was the name of the challenge. And I put January 2022 on the other side because that's when I completed the challenge. I'm really happy. I, I like making these little boxes and cases and things. I think they're really useful and gel prints are a great way to decorate them and especially this one here with the metallic paint on one of my absolute favorites so as i said earlier i'll put a link in the description below to a readable copy of this template with the measurements um, i'll also link to vera lane studios shop where you can purchase these uh, digi stamps if you're interested and these are just made to a standard um, a Polaroid size which let's have a look how big that was if anybody was interested in that it's 8.2 centimeters by 10 centimeters 
and the image inside 7.6 um, square that is a 7.6 centimeter square image inside but as always if you enjoyed this video please leave me a thumbs up um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you again soon but for now that's all bye